This is NLPS Ed Talks, a podcast brought to you by Nanaimo Ladysmith Public Schools. I'm Dale Burgos, the Executive Director of Communications, and I'll be sharing conversations with students, staff, and friends of the district. We'll learn, we'll laugh, we may cry, but most importantly, we'll share the unique stories of individuals that work and play in our school system. Nanaimo Ladysmith Public Schools is one of many school districts in British Columbia, Canada, and is centrally located in one of the most beautiful places in the world, Vancouver Island. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to another edition of NLPS Ed Talks podcast. Uh, this is a very special edition. Uh, we've we've got a very special guest with us. She's a very busy person, so we're very very fortunate to have her here in the podcast booth. Um, it's not necessarily the podcast booth that booth that we typically use here uh, for the uh, podcast. So we're doing it on Teams, and I wanted to introduce to everyone out there, Minister Jennifer Whiteside. Hello, Hi, how are you? I'm I'm well, thanks, Dale, and thanks so much for the uh, for the invitation. Uh, and hello to all of the uh, all of the folks uh, on the um, in the uh, Nanaimo Ladysmith uh, School District area. Uh, just to let you know that uh, I'm coming to you this afternoon from the traditional territory of the Kakite First Nation uh, in my home territory of New Westminster on the banks of the Fraser River. Thank you for sharing that. And and as always, as we start things off here on our side. I'd like to uh, uh, acknowledge that I'm on the traditional uh, and ancestral territory of the Sinemoch people. And, and I thank them for letting me or allowing me to live, work, learn and play on their beautiful lands on this beautiful day. Uh, and so thank you. So, yes, again, thank you for coming down. We will we will take a few minutes. We'll chat with you. And and as we always do with the uh, podcast, we like to get to know the people a little bit, a little bit about their history. Um, obviously, you have a big portfolio, um, the education portfolio for the for the government. We'll get into that a little bit later on. But let's start right from the very beginning. Let's go. And and I mean, I know you're born and bred New West uh, Minster. <laughs> uh, Mr. Wright, or how would how would you say that? You're New Westminster Wright, I think is good. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay, got it right. Um, so let's start right from the very beginning. Then, uh, may I call you Jennifer for the yes, podcast? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay? Yeah. Thank you, Jennifer. Spencer okay. Formality. <laughs> okay. So tell me, where were you born? Where did you grow up? We kind of know, but share it with us. Yeah. Well, I did. I I, I grew up in uh, in in New Westminster. I was born. I was born at RCH, and. Um, I uh, come from a family of uh, I'm the youngest of uh, of four uh, four daughters, um, you know, pretty uh, sort of you know work working class family. Um, I went to school in uh, in New Westminster. I went to college in New West, and really, it was when I was at college uh, at Douglas College. That's really when I sort of uh, I I got my activism bug um, through uh, um, getting involved in uh, student activism and advocating for post secondary education, and I sort of. Uh, Everything sort of went from there. Wow. Okay. And so, uh, you know, you, you talked about how you grew up in in New Westminster um, Elementary School. Uh, I mean, what 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 kept you busy? Like, what were you, what were your hobbies when when you were younger? I, I always like to ask this question. <laughs> I was. Um, I, I always was a big reader. I've always been a big reader. I'm still tr- trying to have less, less, less time, a bit less time to read as uh, uh, these days. Uh, not quite as much as I'd like. Uh, and I was, um, I was a musician. Um, I, uh, you know, I studied piano, and I was always in the school band. And so, really, kind of literature and and reading were my were my main hobbies. Oh, that's awesome! I I love that. And piano, fantastic. So, is that what you played in band? When you were in school, no, you I played. I, I used to when I was in high school. I accompanied the choir um, okay. uh, on on piano, and in band, I played clarinet. Oh, and fabulous! I still remember Mr. Jansen, my uh, my band teacher from uh, Herbert Spencer Elementary, um, who uh, uh, yeah, who came and taught us taught us band, and there I played that through, I played that all the way through high school. There you go. A shout out to Mr. Jansen. I love that. That's yeah. great. Uh, and um, I, I, I was in band as well. I should share this. I always like to share a little bit as well. And I played trumpet through junior high and high school. Um, had a lot of fun through concert band and, and jazz band. That was the only instrument that I that I played. And I wish I picked up more, but that was that was pretty much it. Uh, do you still play piano, clarinet? Uh, you know, I, I don't I don't play clarinet anymore. Um, uh, but I uh, yeah, I still sort of tinkle the ivories when I when I get a chance. <laughs> I have a piano in my house, and yeah, fabulous. I love yeah. it. I mean, okay. music is still a very uh, very important part of my um, very important part of my life. I love it, and 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 so it should be for for many people. I think it's a way to just uh, get get your own time in, especially through the hustle and bustle of our of our daily lives, especially with your portfolio that you're dealing with. So it's nice to just unwind and, and play music. I love that. 
Um, you talked a little bit about activism, and I'd like to delve a little bit a little bit deeper in there. Not not too much, but I just wanted to know. You said you 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 got with, hit with the activism bug, and so what does that mean? Like what 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 did that lead you towards uh, because of that? Well, I um, I was very concerned when I was at college about the sort of the the condition of uh, condition of students with uh, at the time rising tuition fees, and actually those were the days when we even had a bit of a uh, a bit of a grants program. But there were many students, myself included, who were relying on student loans, and most of the support we would get would be in the form of a student loan, uh, and then supplemented with a with a small grant. And uh, you know, most folks in that I knew in my generation were going to school and work. Um, to try to to try to make ends meet, and I learned uh, at that time a lot about the mission of of, um, of community colleges, of how they had come about around uh, in terms of you know that that mission of providing um, an education for um, for uh, kind of working class students who weren't necessarily destined for uh, for, for university, and I think that's. Um, I think that 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 is an imp really important role of uh, to have a broad approach to to post secondary education that accounts for a number of different uh, types of, um, of of programs, and so uh, getting involved with uh, with uh, with my fellow students in advocating for equality, uh, ac uh, with for uh, access, uh, you know, for low tuition fees, uh, those were. You know, and access to services for for students, so that students could really, um, uh, you know, live and be supported and, and go to school. And I carried that on with me to my university years, and um, really, sort of what I what I learned about how to how to work and at with a group of people to advocate for a particular on a particular topic has though that that has always stayed stayed with me and really been kind of foundational to what I've done both in my career, but also in many other aspects of my uh, of my life. Thank you for sharing that. I, I really do appreciate that. Uh, was that always the plan for you or did you feel like when you started out college, was there a different path that you had in your mind uh, and this this took mm -hmm. you on a different path? No, well, I didn't. I, I wouldn't say it, I'm, I'm not sure I had a, a particular uh, particular path. It was always really, really important um, uh, to my parents and my mom in particular that uh, that we go to school. And my not my sisters didn't necessarily have the same opportunities that I that I had to do that and didn't um, you know necessarily make the same choices. And so I had always really from my my mom been instilled with a real sense of the value of education, the importance of education. And I think that's because my mom, who was born in the uh, during during the depression, grew up during the during the depression, um, came, came from a family where that did, didn't have lots of the opportunities that um, she wanted her kids to have. And so I had always sort of taken that that to heart. And um, I, uh, I I I sort of I wound up when I got to university um, d discovering uh, history and becoming a history major. Although I will say I, I went through many different disciplines on my way to finding that um, to finding that discipline. OK, uh, and you mentioned Douglas College, but you also said you went to university as well. I did. Yeah, I graduated from uh, from SFU. With SFU, the, with the so history and history, yeah. not that far away. So then nope. it, you, you've always and, and your whole life you've, you've stuck to the same area, geographic area? Uh, I, no, I mean, I've lived sort of in different parts of the lower mainland and I okay. lived in uh, I lived in in uh, in Quebec in Montreal for uh, for six years. Um, uh, went uh, move, moved uh, moved moved to Montreal, learned French, um, oh. lived, lived there, worked in Ottawa, worked in Montreal um, before I came before coming back to uh, before coming back to British Columbia and settling again in New West. Oh, wow. OK. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit, but uh, so after after university, did did a little bit of moving around. Uh, where were you working? What what industry? Well, I you know I've worked. I worked. I mean, I I think my early uh, sort of working life really reflected lots of folks in my generation. I worked when I was in high school. I. Uh, worked in McDonald's. I worked in uh, retail when I graduated from high school. Um, uh, at, you know, I did waitressing. I waitressed for years. I mean, that those were sort of the jobs that helped me put my myself through um, through uh, through college and, uni and university. And then um, at one point, I when I was unemployed, I um, came across a uh, a jobs program through what was then the unemployment insurance. 
Corporation, right? UIC is what we used to call it. Okay. And uh, they were uh, they were running a jobs program. And I had, it was a sort of an, an opportunity for not-for-profit organizations to get a grant from government to hire an unemployed person and their wage would be subsidized. And that was how I came to work for the Gordon Neighborhood House down down in in the West End, on a on a project that was a that was all about reaching out to family daycare providers in the West End, and um, essentially organizing them, trying to you know identifying kind of doing needs assessment, you know how are they doing, what did they need, did they need education, did they need supports, how did we can how would we connect them into the broader childcare community, and. Um, that was when I really discovered uh, sort of my organizing bug that um, I really liked organizing. I really liked reaching out to people. I really liked pulling people together and um, uh, so ran that uh, ran that project. And uh, from there, really, I um, uh, I I became, you know, I was a real advocate for obviously for also, you know, accessible, high quality, affordable child care. That was what that project was all about. And I worked a little bit in sort of child care advocacy for um, for for a period of time. And um, and then when I was at university, this was sort of in between college and university. And then when, when I was at university, I worked in um, um, uh, for uh, for for student organization. And then eventually I wound up working for a union. Uh, the hospital employees union, and that's really where everything came together. All of my sort of interest in in advocacy and organizing, and in um, just standing up for people and standing up for 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 our communities, all came to together in that work. And you mentioned hospital union. Um, is that here in, here in BC? Yeah, in, in BC, yeah, the, the Hospital Employees Union is a union that represents both now 50,000 or so uh, workers wow. in our in our healthcare system, all across our healthcare system. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I I've sort of work I've worked in um, uh, on the labor side of healthcare. Did I did that work for about for 20 odd 20 odd years? Wow. Okay. And you're very much an advocate. I mean, it sounds as if again it goes back to um, your your Douglas College days and and. Uh, advocating for uh, affordable education, as as you said, but um, uh, there's also the uh, like you're talking about here, Medicare health equity um, is is somewhere that I had read. So that's that's all very important, and and, and that's great work. I mean, that's we we need people out there. Obviously, uh, we're going through some difficult times right now, and we are. Uh, and uh, we need we need those advocates out there. And so, uh, what made you now? Here's here's the next question. You know, you you're you're doing some great work with the hospital union. What made you make that transition into uh, becoming a, a public uh, person? Yeah, I, I, it wasn't one that I have to say that I saw on the horizon or that I had been sort of had it had in my career plan. I mean, this this time last year, I was um, uh, working as the, uh, the the chief spokesperson and, and chief negotiator for the hospital employees union, a job I'd done for five years. Uh, and had having done many different jobs in uh, in in health labor relations from labor relations work to policy and advocacy and organizing work uh, both in British Columbia and, and across the in the east and, and, and at the federal level and so I, um, I I didn't have it in my uh, on on my radar to be to be changing that that trajectory because we were of course right in the right in the midst of dealing with covid and and dealing with um, how to protect particularly uh, both workers and residents in long-term care, and I spent most of last year working with government and health employers on building the building the protections in that in that sector. But I really saw the 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 COVID uh, pandemic as really surfacing and really shining a light on uh, what what we have known to be true that 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 there is a lot of inequality. Uh, in our society, and it is it is built into how we how our healthcare system operates, how education operates, how how we how we operate a, as a society, and that coming out of COVID, we have a real opportunity to sort of you know build back better, build back in a different way, in a way that doesn't leave people behind. And I thought that um, for me, that project um, is very, very important. And it's an opportunity to sort of bring together a lot of the advocacy that I've done over the course of my life to try and really help our government and to help all of us um, to, for me to contribute to um, finding that path forward um, that, that, that will hopefully leave us, uh, leave us in and lead us to a better place uh, than we were in before we entered the pandemic. 
Yes, and um, I mean, let's let's transition into that now that you've mentioned COVID and you've mentioned the pandemic. I mean, obviously, this is it, this is life changing for so many. I, I mean, it's it's families, you know, sadly um, ha having members pass away from from this um, from the virus. And I mean, coming on as an elected official, and this was the election back in October, I believe it was, yep. and then you getting uh, named as the education minister yep. <laughs> uh, within a couple months, uh, yep. maybe even less than a couple months. I mean, that is um, by far one of the biggest portfolios uh, that, that a provincial government uh, can, can overlook. And so this is uh, you coming in. I mean, I'd like to get the feeling of, okay, I understand you've been an advocate for education and there's no question that uh, you're a great choice. Uh, but I'd like to know what was in your mind at the time, too, because that's, uh, you know, coming in um, new to politics, new new to uh, government. And and then here you go. Uh, there's a pandemic right now. Oh, and by the way, let's let's give you education. <laughs> Right. Um, you know, I, I try and I, I laugh about it and I hope you're OK with that. But I mean, it's also at the same time, I mean, we're all going through something right now. And so I'd really like to get your take on just how you were feeling through that all. Well, I mean, we're, we're all called upon to contribute in the in, in the way that we can and to and, and, and to do what we can. And I can uh, say that, I mean, it is it's a tremendous honor to have been asked to take on um, such a, an important portfolio, not not just because the portfolio is big, but because it's education. It's uh, yeah, for me, it's sort of it's a it's um, it, it's a parallel uh, um, sort of system to our healthcare system in terms of the importance of uh, the importance of the the role of our education system in building a strong democratic um, uh, society, and so it's um, it, it's a, it's very much an honor to have been asked to to do this work. And I think everybody is stepping up in uh, in in the in the way that they can to try and help us uh, help help us navigate the the terrain that we're that we're on right now. But yes, I, I can tell you that it was a bit of it all happened awfully quickly for me because I. Um, uh, you know, I made the, de the, the, the decision fairly, uh, you know, really just at, at the end of the summer to um, uh, to run uh, when it became apparent right. that uh, my sort of my, my friend and mentor Judy Darcy was no was no longer wasn't going to stand again. Um, and uh, uh, so I made the decision to, to, to throw my hat in the ring. And um, then we had the election, and then we, uh, and and then I was asked to asked to join the cabinet. So it, it did all happen very quickly, and it's a it's a big uh, it's a it's it's a very big and complicated system to learn. There are a lot of moving parts in in education, and it's um uh, it's been um, uh, just well just fabulous so far, and particularly working with all of the partner groups in education. We have such strong. Um, uh, you know, roots in the community. And I think that's one of the real strengths of our system is that we have um, such incredible advocates. And when I think about Nanaimo Ladysmith in particular, the, the, um, the, the board, the work that trustees have done around reconciliation, which is a fundamentally important um, um, piece of, uh, of of our government's agenda, and the way in which um, uh, we have um, uh, other other uh, um, you know lo local groups really really taking up that that agenda and working in in partnership on on the ground. So there there are um, yeah just uh, incredible opportunities um, in uh, in existing in this sector. I love it, and thank you, and thank you for sharing the um, our part on reconciliation. We're very proud. Uh, of, of the work that we do and and my six years here with the districts um i've i've been I, i've met with our knowledge keepers and we've had some great conversations and it's it's not just about work it's just about life and and i do really value those partnerships that we've created over here so uh, i'm i'm glad that you've you've recognized that so much appreciated uh two two quick hitter questions here and then, and then we should let you go here um i mean obviously COVID is is a big piece of of your um of your time right now it's taken up taking a lot of bit of time and i mean i'd like to just get a take of you know a couple just quick stories about something maybe covid related that's going to stick with you forever and then maybe that's something that's not covid related and something you heard from a school I, i'd love to hear a couple stories well, I think one of the things that I will really take away from uh, from the our, our collective experience of the pandemic, two things really, is um, the incredible acts of social solidarity I think that we have seen right since the beginning of the pandemic. And I certainly saw this in, uh, I saw this in health. I, I mean, I think we've all seen this in our communities, people really taking care of each other. Um, 
And I see that across education as well. It was really evident as soon as I stepped into the portfolio, I could really see how groups had come together to make it possible to keep our schools open. Um, understanding that education is such a fundamental societal value and to try to to try to mitigate the impact of the of the pandemic on kids is uh, is 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 just fundamental and and the way to do that is to make sure they have access to schools so i i would just lift my hands to everybody in the education sector who has done a phenomenal job under incredibly difficult circumstances with an in an unprecedented health crisis we're coming together working together to build the um, the framework and the safety plans in order to keep schools open and i know i mean it's not always been perfect for sure it's not going to be in the in uh, of course in, in a pandemic but we we have done um, so well here in British Columbia um, if we sort of look at how how things have have developed in other jurisdictions I just I, I think we've I think everybody's done a good job and that's really down to I think very good leadership from uh, from our from our government um, for sure to be sure but very good leadership all the way through uh, in the districts with the trustees in the schools with uh, with teachers with the, all of education workers um, principals vice principals supers I just everybody and of course uh, trustees and parents and kids uh, have just stepped up in in incredible ways. So, and I'm aware of the some of the work that your your district and many other districts have done as well. I mean, making sure that kids get fed, continue to get fed through the pandemic, making sure that food programs continue to operate, and particularly when schools were closed yes. last spring, just making doing everything possible to make sure that 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 connection is um, it, it was was maintained. So, I think those acts of sort of social solidarity have really um, have have really helped us get through this and I think that there's been uh, also part of that has been a real um, sense of uh, collaboration I think and, uh, and our government wanting to collaborate um, with communities uh, with community partners with sector partners to get through this uh, and that uh, that I think has been very Im important as well I mean I, th I think there'll be lots of opportunity when we're through COVID to look at what what we did well and what we didn't do well and I, I'm sure we'll, we'll go through all of that um and hopefully in a, in a in a collective way of sort of processing what's been a really traumatic event for everybody mm -hmm. in our society um but we'll get there but I think it's also you know it it, it will have a general generational impact certainly on the kids who are going through school it will have a, it, it, a really lasting impact. So I, um, yeah, so there's lots to reflect on on there. And I, um, I just, I, I think in terms of stories, what I um, have, you're right that we've just, we're in COVID all the time. It's sort of all COVID all the time. And I'm really trying to pull myself out of COVID to think about the horizon, what's on the horizon and mm. the opportunities that we will have to talk about um, how we build anti build on our anti-racism work in education, how we build more equity uh, in education, how we build um, um, more uh, af affordability for uh, for parents, which to me is again all, all about making sure that kids have equal access to the to the programs um, and and supports that that they need in schools, addressing mental some of the mental health challenges that 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 exist. That, that those are really important pieces of work um, that we uh, that, that we have to do and we're going to have to do that um, uh, collectively and I, I know that I can just I can I can work I mean we, we talk about these things and talk with partners about how uh, and plan work and are engaged in work on many of these things and I'd love to come back and talk to you about some <laughs> some more of those down love down the road you. once we're sure. once we're through COVID but for me personally what I really can't wait to do when we're done with this is actually get out and talk to kids. I, um, you know, I had an opportunity to, to zoom into a meeting with um, a student sort of uh, advisory group meeting in the Surrey School District a couple of months ago. And um, that was really, that was just wonderful to be able to hear the perspective of, um, how, of, of from, from kids themselves, from students themselves. And I'd like to do much, much more of that. I mean, for me, I've always been really, the, what, what's always really driven me in my work is um, hearing about and working with people who are on the front lines. So when I was working in for healthcare unions, it was all about what kind of experience are people having who work in our healthcare system having and uh, learning from them and uh, incorporating that into our work so that we can really walk together to make the improvements that we need that we need to make. And I, uh, I'd, I'd really looking forward to the chance to do the same thing in education, getting out, talking to kids, teachers, of course, and folks in uh, more boards 
not 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 just on Zoom, but in in three D. <laughs> exactly. Well, we have a we have a we'll give you a standing invite to come visit when it's safe to do so. Great. Right. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate you, appreciate you coming in coming on the podcast here and just um, I'm getting choked up because you mentioned equity. I should point this out, and that's very near and dear to me personally uh, and professionally. But um, you know, my family we we are very much about equity. Uh, and making sure that everyone feels safe uh, in their schools. And so thank you for saying that. Uh, again, thank you for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. I know we can talk probably a lot longer than than we were given, yeah. but I know you've got to go, so I'm going to let you go. Yeah. Uh, I won't ask you what your next steps is because education, there's always, you, you just can't plan from, from, from you know, a week in advance. It's day to day. So thank you so much for coming on the NLPS Ed Talks podcast. Wish you all the best. And, and again, thank you for coming. Thanks so much, Dale.